This is the story of Deadpool. The merc with the mouth has made a lot of friends recently. The robotic Agent Preston and her family. Agent Adsit. Michael the Necromancer. And even the ghost of Ben Franklin. He got married to the monster queen Shikla and found out that he had a daughter named Ellie. A while back, Deadpool also took out the helicarrier of a terrorist group called Ultimata. This faction was taken over by a new leader called Flag Smasher, who thinks it's time for the mercenary to be taught a lesson. On a quiet night at the Preston residence, the children are being read to before bedtime. Ultimatum agents close in on the home and get ready to strike. Suddenly, three of the agents burst into flame, while those in the backyard are brutally slaughtered by an army of skeletons. The ghost of Ben Franklin laughs. They all thought he was crazy when he insisted on planting the undead forces back there, but look at them now! Michael admits that the ghost was right and uses his own magic to hold off the remaining attackers. Preston and her family are attacked by the invaders, so Ben Franklin possesses one of the agents. The possessed man is forced to shoot his comrades and then himself, while Preston and her family escape to the safe house. The agent calls Adsit to warn the man of the attack, and though he had survived his own confrontation with the terrorist, the S.H.I.E.L.D. officer is badly wounded. Flag Smasher orders the Preston home to be burned to the ground, while Ultimatum prepares for Deadpool's retaliation. As the mercenaries' friends and family gather at the safe house, Wade calls them and makes sure everyone is okay. He tells Preston to have everybody sit tight. Ultimatum expects Deadpool to behave as usual, to recklessly charge at them in revenge like a wounded animal. So Wade does what nobody expects of him. He lays low, thinks carefully, and begins to form a plan. He travels to Stark headquarters and an AIM facility, collecting a trove of weapons and gear in preparation. The mercenary also captures one of the best computer hackers in the world, and buys a polluted and worthless farm in Kansas to arrange for a meeting spot on his own terms. On board Ultimatum's second helicarrier, Flag Smasher is shown eight bodies with numbers carved into them. The leader recognizes these as coordinates. Meanwhile, Deadpool's hacker finishes his job, and the mercenary lets him go. At the United States Northern Command Facility, the officers panic as a fleet of drones suddenly take off. To their alarm, somebody has hacked into their systems and is stealing all of these deadly weapons. On the polluted farm, Deadpool sits on the hood of a car as Ultimatum's entire military force surrounds it. A contingent of men approach the mercenary who is happily using his iPad, uninterested in the attackers. Too late, they realize that Deadpool is watching them from a camera high above in the sky. The fleet of drones unleash their missiles on the terrorists, instantly wiping out all the tanks and most of the forces surrounding the mercenary. Pleased with the first onslaught, Deadpool prepares for round two by activating an EMP courtesy of Stark Industries, causing all the helicopters and the second helicarrier to crash and burn at Deadpool's hands. The soldiers prepare to charge, assuming he's out of missiles, but they are wrong. Anything can be a missile, like a drone recently hit by an EMP colliding with the ground. The rest of the afternoon goes exactly as planned. None of Ultimatum's forces stand a chance, nor did the Shriners, an elderly woman the terrorist had hired. In the end, only Flag Smasher remains. He begs for mercy. This was just supposed to be some clownish merc that had to be killed. As he is shot in the head, Flag is consoled that he succeeded. Deadpool is dead. Wade uses some farm equipment to massacre the few wounded survivors and scorches the earth with a song in his heart. 
He owes it to his daughter to keep her safe from this circus. So it's time for a grand finale. Deadpool must die if Wade Wilson is to live. Six days later, a toast is held for Wade and all his friends on a stolen yacht, and everyone has survived the earlier attack. They aren't mad at him for getting their lives in danger, and Preston asks her friend to consider just taking a moment and feeling happy and loved for once. Nothing bad comes from love. He closes his eyes and actually feels it, the warmth of love. But soon he realizes it's too warm and opens his eyes to discover a massive object in the sky. Wade panics, as he always thought the incursion stuff was a bunch of Avengers nonsense, and is pumped out to realize that none of them figure that stuff out yet. Wade's friends die around him, but Wilson gives himself over to this end. He embraces his daughter and is safe in love. He can live with this finale. If he's going out, at least he's taking everybody with him. One night at a quiet bar, Shikla bursts into the street. Trivia night is not going well, and the queen wonders how she is supposed to rule part of this world when she knows nothing about human history and art. Deadpool agrees to help his wife, and they go visit an elderly Steve Rogers. The queen begs the Avenger for help in learning about the modern world, and he gives her the same material he was given when he was thawed from ice. She goes over the gift, which mostly seems to be Star Wars and Disney movies, and feels much more knowledgeable about the modern era. However, when they go back to Trivia Night, they find the bar is still closed for repairs from her earlier rampage. Frustrated, Deadpool's wife wants to be alone for a while, and she walks the city streets. She encounters a family being mugged, and stops the criminals, forcing them into a game of trivia. During one encounter with a villain known as Leatherboy, Deadpool finds an injured dog. He rushes it to the X-Mansion and insists that Beast transplant some of the mercenary's healing power into the dog. The procedure is successful, but the dog appears to have gained the ability to speak and a personality similar to that of Deadpool's. Naming him Taco Dog, Wade takes him to the Preston house to give him a home. Taco proves to aggregate Preston with guests, abusive credit cards, and uh, stuff I'd rather not talk about. One day, Preston asks Taco to be on his best behavior, as Agent Coulson is coming for dinner. But when Coulson doesn't pet the dog, Taco knows something is up. He confronts the agent and shoots him in the head, which luckily works out okay, because it turns out Coulson was a robot. The family is saved and thankful. When it turns out, this was all just an elaborate fantasy of Deadpool. Taco is just a normal dog that the beast healed with simple modern medicine. <laughs> the next story begins with Evan, clone of Apocalypse, strangling Deadpool. He explains that he's a villain now, and even stole some of Deadpool's gear and robbed a bank. The theft did not go well, as a woman suffered a heart attack and the Reavers also chose to rob the bank at the same time. They laughed at the idea of a child being Apocalypse, but Evan's powers over molecular reconstruction made short work of the mostly mechanical villains. Knowing he had to take the woman to the hospital, he had the bank write an IOU and left, only for the woman to suddenly say she was feeling much better. Deadpool consoles Evan. Old ladies fool people all the time, and he shouldn't feel bad, or take it out on his best buddy ever. As Evan calms down, Wade reassures him that what he did as Apocalypse wasn't his fault. The boy isn't going to grow up into that villain. He's going to grow up to be Evan. That couch is on fire. On the shield helicarrier Iliad, the agency is under attack after a meteor turns citizens of New York into men wolves. Luckily, Spider-Man is on the scene and helps the agent out. Adset is thrilled to meet the famous hero, until Coulson is knocked down. 
The agent teams up with Spidey, fighting off the monsters until Adset has an idea. He retrieves a special tanning lamp he uses to maintain a rosy glow while trapped on a ship for weeks on end. Activating it exposes the men to the effects of sunlight, reverting them to human form. Spider-Man thanks Adset for his quick thinking, and the agent asks for a favor. Coulson later finds the S.H.I.E.L.D. officer tied up in webbing, and compliments the agent on a job well done. In Philadelphia, the Thing arrives, tired from a long day and eager for a massive meal. But a shadow looms overhead, and he is annoyed to find a villain controlling a massive squid on a rampage. Meanwhile, across town, the ghost of Benjamin Franklin is about to enjoy a bath when he hears the squid attacking the city. With no time for the ghost to dress, and knowing he always fights better in the nude, Ben sets off swinging through the streets of his home city. With the thing in the squid's clutches, the ghost arrives just in time. Using his powers of electricity, the spirit makes quick work of the squid. But Ben Grimm is furious. Thanks to Franklin, he has been electrocuted and exposed to old man nudity. But Franklin says the thing cannot punch a ghost. So instead, they enjoy a meal together until Grimm realizes that if the ghost is corporeal enough to eat, he can also be hit. Our next story begins with Michael visiting his girlfriend Daphne in order to meet her parents. Daphne's father proves to be rude, belligerent, dismissive, and aggressive, and Michael is pretty nervous about the situation. When her mother leaves to go get pie and does not return for some time, the necromancer goes to see what is wrong. He finds her dead, having choked on a drumstick. Luckily, the magic user knows just what to do and resurrects the woman. However, she comes back somewhat different, gouging on chicken and then grabbing her husband for some... Well, things get really awkward so Michael and Daphne leave. The end. The final story begins with Deadpool on a mission. He retrieves the Cosmic Cube on the orders of Thanos, who wants the only object in the universe that can possibly stand up to the Infinity Gauntlet. But Thanos suddenly notices Deadpool is wearing a gauntlet of his own. The mercenary explains that he used the cube to swap Thanos' gauntlet with a toy, and he uses the real Infinity Gems to destroy Thanos and his helicopter. With the Infinity Gauntlet, Deadpool can do anything, and he knows exactly what he wants. It's time for Deadpool Roast the Marvel Universe. But as he gets ready for the show, the mercenary runs into Howard the Duck. It's going to be Deadpool's night alright, but he's going to be the target of the roast. With Howard serving as Roastmaster, the roast of Deadpool begins. Cable, the Avengers, Spider-Man, Daredevil, Nightcrawler, Preston, Shikla, Ben Franklin, and, brought in for a visit thanks to Mephisto, even Wolverine all roast Deadpool, until it's Wade's turn for the response. Deadpool begins his speech and uses the gems to force everyone to keep laughing, until, reflecting on his life and purpose, he gets frustrated and freezes everyone in place. He then leaves the theater, turning to the audience and reprimanding them, for finding his struggles with mental health and his torturous past funny, until Howard interrupts them. The Duck says that he was Marvel's Deadpool long before this character came along, and hopes that everyone helped the mercenary get over the fact that he is basically comic relief. Wade decides the show is over. He undoes everything and gives the gauntlet back to Thanos, who kicks him out of the helicopter. Crashing into the river below, Deadpool says we'll see him soon in Secret Wars. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden and this is my recap and review of Deadpool number 45. You know, I sometimes gripe about the current prices of comics. 
Too often, Marvel and DC will charge $5 for a completely underwhelming experience. Now this issue of Deadpool runs at a retail price of $10, so you might be surprised to find that I really loved and recommend this comic. This was a great celebration of this run, as well as Deadpool on the whole. With over 80 pages of content and a giant amount of guest writers and artists, this issue is totally worth every penny. There are so many great jokes here. I love Deadpool wiping out an entire army, all the side characters getting their own little story, and best of all, Thanos riding around in a helicopter with his name on it for no apparent reason. The comic had me laughing several times throughout the read. I can't possibly include all the great jokes and lines here, so you'll have to check this one out for yourself just to enjoy all of them. And that fight scene was one of the best drawn and most fun bits of action I've seen in a comic in a long time. There's just so much to love about Deadpool number 45. I heartily recommend you get a hold of this comic, either in digital or print form. It's a lot of fun and totally worth your time, even if you haven't been following recent Deadpool events. Everything is explained well enough that it isn't necessary to read the 249 issues that precede this one. Not every joke lands, but I still found this comic complete and total fun from start to finish. You don't have to get every reference or know what's going on to enjoy this one, so I really recommend you check out Deadpool number 45 for yourself. Too often I view Deadpool as a character overplayed by Marvel. But it's a comic like this that reminds me how awesome and fun this character can be. Do you guys agree? Let me know what you think of Deadpool, this comic, and this character's future, what with that movie coming out, in the comment section below. And, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.